guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be an upcycling craft video yes um i finally had a few minutes to try and uh record this video for you first of all let me fix that no i guess i like it like that i don't think you want to see my dirty slippers Okay, if you recall, in uh, one of my haul videos, I purchased this uh, wooden bench and for the sole purpose of doing an upcycle on it. Um, I got this at Salvation Army, and um, it's a really great bench. Um, right now, I have it sitting on my stool, um, but it's a really, really nice, thick wood bench. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to, I am going to paint this, but first I want to try and sand off some of this um, design so that it doesn't show through my paint and also so I don't have to do as many coats of paint. Um, I hate to waste paint if I don't have to, you know what I mean? So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to start sanding off some of this uh, paint. Now, I am using, this is a sanding block. I don't remember where I got it, so I don't even know what grid it is. Um, I may have to go to a stronger grit, uh, which is highly possible. Let me see what I have here. Um, I do have some 220 grit. Let me see what this does. Whoops. I wish I had my sanding block. I don't even know where the heck it is. I do have an actual um, electric sander, but it's out in the garage. And uh, I'm not feeling like going out there to get it, you know? <laughs> uh, let's see. How does it go on here? I know it'll take off this white. I may just have to get, yeah, the white's coming off easily with the 220 grit. So I may just have to get an 80 grit for the uh, pink and the red paint. Yeah, this is coming off quite easily. You'll see me, I'm spinning this around so I can Oh, yeah. So basically, this is what I'm just going to do. Sand this off. It's a little bit harder on the edges because it didn't have as much wear um, as it did on the sides. So let's bring this this way. See if I can get this off. Boy, am I out of shape. <laughs> Let's go back to this side and see what we can do. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, I'm going to grab some 80 grit sandpaper and I'll be right back. All right, so I have some 80 grit sandpaper and I was doing the sides. And as you could see, this is all dovetailed together. So that is, that is a nice bench. Yeah, that is, that's beautiful. Let's try this 80 grit over here on this red. Yeah, that's much better. As long as I can get most of it off, I'll be happy. I mean, it is going to take some elbow grease just to try and get it off. Thank you. 
this piece of sandpaper has seen better days. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty crappy as you can see. Uh, let me get this wipe and see how we're doing. Eh, it's coming along. I also have, there's also some parts um, on the, the, the legs of the bench as well that I'm going to have to get off. So I'm going to continue to sand this. And when I have it all sanded off and ready to paint, I'll be back. Okay, guys. So I got it all sanded. Um, I did the, the sides as well. As you could see, I just wanted to make sure that I mention that anytime you're sanding um, wood, to make sure that you sand in the same direction as the grain of the wood. You don't want to sand in the opposite direction. Always sand with the grain. So, um, this is ready to go. I wiped it all down after I sanded it to get rid of all of the... Um, the dust. So now I'm going to paint it. And I think that I'm probably going to paint it with this. Um, this is my favorite go-to color. It's Waverly uh, Plaster uh, Chalk Paint. It's, uh, it's like an off-white or an antique white. And uh, so this is what I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to use, I don't know if I, I don't really want to use a chip brush, which is these kind of brushes that you could get at, um, Dollar Tree, because then you get way too many brush strokes. So, let me see. Uh, that's got wax on it, so I can't use that one. My goodness, all my brushes are dirty. Go figure. Okay, so I tried this brush and it was leaving bristles everywhere. So I have decided that I am going to just use a foam brush. And hopefully, you know, this is going to need a couple coats because it's so dark. But that's okay. Let me get this bristle out of here. All right. I don't normally like to use foam brushes because I feel like they absorb so much of the paint. I just feel like it's you're wasting your paint using a foam brush, but... Um, the other brushes that I have are too small for a larger project like this. So that's why I'm just using this uh, foam brush for now. Um, just trying to fill in those areas where there's like little um, imperfections in the wood. And I'm going to paint, of course, the inside of this hole. <laughs> I'll get it better from the other side. But, all right. So there is the top. The top is complete for coat one. All right, now we're going to work on the sides. So what I did is I dried the top that I just painted um, with a heat gun uh, just to kind of make the process go quicker. Um, if you don't have a heat gun, you could dry it with um, your blow dryer. Um, just don't hold it too close because you'll bubble your paint. You know, you want to keep it about five, six inches away from the surface. Um... But yeah, also I wanted to mention that you can get chalk paint at Walmart. Um, they sell it on Amazon. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics. Um, so just for future reference, if you're wanting to get yourself some chalk paint, 
There's many, many places that you can um, get chalk paint. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to try, I'm going to have to put something under here to keep it tilted. So I can paint. Nope, I guess I'm just going to have to hold it so I can paint, um, paint the, um, the, oh shoot, I just touched the side with my hand. What a dork. <laughs> Let me touch that up. Hang on. That's like, you know, putting an oven mitt on to get something out of the oven and pulling the rack out with the hand without an oven mitt. I have done that before as well. Not fun. Not fun at all. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to kind of fit that in there. That works really well because it's got an angled, it has an angled uh, edge, which works well for getting into those spaces like that. Come on now. All right, I just want to make sure I don't have any big blobs. Just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Hopefully, I don't have any bleed through from the actual stuff that's already on here. There's a chunk missing out of this one. Um, oh, I just did it again. I touched that side that I just painted. Will I ever learn? Apparently not. <laughs> oh, Lordy. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get out my heat gun. And I am going to dry this area so that I can move on to the other side. So I am going to um, spare you the sound of the heat gun and I'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to do this other side panel here. I'm sure you guys know how to paint. I'm just going to show you the first coat that I do on the entire bench. And then I will go off camera and do the second coat and let that dry. And then we will move on to um, the rest of the project. All right, I'm going to grab my heat gun and I'm gonna dry this side piece before I turn it over and do the other part because you know I'll be touching this with my fingers. So let's not do that again. All right, so here we are moving on to the other side. Painting can be very relaxing, but for someone like me who, who whose patients are uh, pretty much non-existent, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a terrible waiting game, you know? You got to wait for it to dry, and that's why I, I use my heat gun, <laughs> but... Um, it's 
it's such a wonderful feeling when you complete a project and it comes out just the way you envisioned it, you know. Um, sometimes, sometimes it comes out crappy and you just like start over. I've done that um, on a few of my upcycles where I finished it and I'm like, nope, I don't like it. And I just started all over again and redid it. And it came out better the second time around. So that's that's the way it is when you when you craft, you know. You never know how something's going to come out. Um it's trial and error many times. So um you just got to kind of go with it and uh experiment. For sure. And I watch, you know, I do. I watch a lot of YouTube videos on upcycling thrifted items and I'm like I'm just like loving this I really am um I I have found a new crafting thing that I absolutely love to do so yes all right okay so I guess what I'll do is I will, uh, chalk paint dries pretty quick, which is another awesome thing about chalk paint. It covers pretty much any surface. It doesn't matter if it has varnish on it or whatever, uh, most surfaces. Um, and that's why I love it. It's very versatile. So, um, I'm going to, um, pull out my heat gun again and get this dried and then we'll flip this over and do all of this inside area. Right, let's get this inside part painted. I'm going to go along like this to get into the corners. If I can, get in there. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a brush to get in there because it doesn't want to doesn't wanna get in the corners good. You want to put, you don't want to put a really thick coat on for your first coat. You want to do it, you know, somewhat uh, thin. I mean, you, you don't want it real, real thick. Let's just put it that way. You can see that it's not on here very thick because you could still see um, the wood through the paint. That's what you want for your first coat. Here. You want to make sure you don't have any big clumps or drips along your edges. Um, let me turn this around and do this other inside edge. I'm sure my arm is in the way. All right, and then we just have to do these, uh, these sides. I know, I should be talking. I'm, I'm in the zone, guys. I'm in the zone. I'm in the painting zone. I'm concentrating. <laughs> All right, let's do this. And then, when we come back, it will be time to do um, the best part, which is decorating. You guys all know I love decorating. Heck yeah! Heck yeah! So, I will, uh, off camera, I will put another coat on here. We'll see how it looks after two coats. Um, hopefully, I won't need a third coat. Um, but you never know. It just depends. Once it dries, you know how it looks. So, all right. So, that is coat number one. And I will come back when I'm done painting. All right, everyone. I uh, have applied 
two coats of my chalk paint on here. And it turns out that two coats is plenty uh, because once I um, do my decorating on it and age it a little bit, it's going to be perfect. So I decided that on the top of this bench, I wanted to do some rub-on transfers. And I have decided to go with this beautiful uh, rose one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut these out. I'm not going to just put the whole transfer on just like it is. I am going to piece out some of these flowers and some of this text so that it is in all different spots of the top of this bench. So I think what I'm going to do first let me get my scissors and I am going to cut off, I'm gonna cut off this text right here because I'm gonna put that in a different spot. I'll set that aside. All right, and I'm also going to, I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut, I am going to cut, this this right here out and then I'm going to cut this um, section out here. So let me go with, we're going to go up here. And we're going to go over here and then I'm going to cut all around. Actually, I'm going to cut over here. And I am going to cut around this one flower. Um, I'm going to... Let me see. I'm going to come up this way. I'm sorry. I'm out of frame. It's hard for me to watch what I'm doing and see where I am on the camera. Okay, and I'm going to take this. And I'm going to... Okay, so I have this right here that I'm going to put, and I'm not quite sure. I think I might put it over here. And then over here, I may put that. Let me cut that off. Put this. Just trying to see. Um, um, and then I'm going to put this. You just got to play around with the placement, you know, to figure out where you want to put it. This I think I could put down here. But I also have some other um, roses uh, that I could add to it or some other flowers. Um, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do. Um, so then there's these flowers. Let me find them. Oh, here they are. So I also have these, which I can add to it. Um, I'm really not sure. I'm going to, I got to figure out how I want to put these on here. So I might, I may put that at an angle. And cut out like this text here. 
and put this at an angle. Hmm. I could put this like this. So it kind of goes around that area. I might do that. I don't know. Let me think. Oh, did you just hear my stomach? Hmm. I do kind of like it coming around here. So what I'm going to have to do is like snip here so that it'll fold down. Um, I think maybe that's what I'm going to do right there. So let me do this first. All right. So let me pull it down some. And I will have to like snip so that this I can fold down. Okay. Let me, we'll do a snip here. A snip here. Gotta do a snip here. Hmm. Uh, I know that's gonna work. That's gonna work. This is gonna be, this side doesn't want us. I gotta go up a little bit more here. We'll see what happens with that. Okay, so now all I have to do is I've got to peel the actual transfer off of the backing paper. And then, very carefully, you don't want to put it down all the way until you have it um, right where you want it and that it's straight. Pardon my head, guys. I have to get in here just to see if I have it where I wanted it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to press it down. Okay. Now, these transfers um, that I get... I will leave a link to the place that I get them in the description box. These are made by Iron Orchid Designs. And each uh, book of transfers comes with this little stick, which is how you rub the transfer onto your, your item. So you're just going to go over the whole thing with your transfer stick. Now, when you get to this part here, you're going to fold this down and you're just going to kind of, you know, you, you got to be kind of careful and do the same thing here. These come off fairly easily. Some of them don't. See, now this one I'm having a hard time with and the, um, you could see some of it is left on the transfer paper there. But when you're trying to go in an area, let me see, I can get that. Sometimes I just rub it with my nail <laughs> and it works and it did work. Now, you can see, you see the difference in the color? See how this is? less dark and this is much darker this has transferred off of this backing paper where this has not yet now once you rub all of this what you do to make a transfer easier is you start lifting your paper your transfer paper you can see where it's transferred and as you pull up it makes it easier to transfer your graphic. And if you should pull up and not all of the graphic has come off of the paper, you just set it back down and rub it again until it all transfers. 
See how much easier this comes when you start to pull up the paper as you go? Okay, this one didn't come all the way, so I laid it back down. And just keep pulling and rubbing, and it will all be transferred onto your project. I love these transfers. Look at that. So now what you do is you take your transfer paper and you just kind of burnish it just to make sure that it's on there good. Okay, so there's that part. I'm happy with the way that came out. It's not, it's, it got a little bit um, screwy down in here, but it came out good. All right, now, yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, now, for this one, uh, how do I want to do this one? This one I could just do right here. I guess in the corner. Um, or maybe up a little bit like that. Yeah, I think that, that's what I'll do. And I'll probably take a rose from, from something else. Uh, let me peel that off. These uh, transfers... You can see that these are, um, they're a matte finish. They don't have any shine to them. Some of the other transfers that I have purchased are a lot thicker. Like, these are so thin. They're like, they're so thin. They're like thinner than tissue paper. Um, the other ones that I got are very thick and they're really shiny, which I don't like. Even if I go over them with some sandpaper, they're still um they're still shiny, which I'm upset because they they have some beautiful transfers. I'll show them to you once I um get these on here. So again, I'm just going to I'm just going to rub over this whole thing with the transfer stick and then I'll start in an area and start pulling back the um the transfer paper let me bring it this way so you can see I'll start where the words are and I'll start peeling back the um see you could see how it's but I need to do it this way so that there we go. All right. So I will I will burnish and pull. Can't believe how wonderful these transfers are. I I just absolutely love them. And I'm not sponsored or anything. I don't, you know, do any of that stuff, but. Look at that. Oh, ho, ho. All right. So there is that one. So that's what we've got so far. Now, I do have this, which I think I may put up here. I'm not quite sure yet. Or I might put, whoops, don't come off the backing paper because it'll stick to my, my bench where I don't want it. Um, and it will stick to your fingers, too. Um, okay, let me... Let me go through my transfers and see what I can put 
I want to do a little something over here, even, even if it's just like rose leaves or buds or something like that. So let me see what I can find and then I'll come back. All right, I did find this smaller transfer um, that I think would go great like over here. So I think I may put this there and I think I'm gonna leave this over here. Um. I think, yeah, I think that's what I might do. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm, I'm still thinking, guys. Okay, so I found this one. This one matches better, and it has the same name, um, the G-O-H Melon Company. So this is the one I'm going to put here, and then I'm going to, I think I'm going to stick with this over here. Um, all right, so let me peel this off. Make sure that it's straight. Burnish it with my hand first. And then we'll go with our burnishing stick. Ah! Gotta be careful. You sh I should have been holding that corner. Sometimes the writing is the hardest thing to get to transfer. But it seems to be coming pretty good here. Well. Now these transfers are not cheap, but as I said in my past videos, you get what you pay for. Um, you could tell when it's stuck and it doesn't want to there we go um uh, and i will show you what i mean okay all right now i'm gonna just put this um sign here i could put it here but i kind of like it over here You can take something that was plain and ordinary and turn it into something beautiful. Um, I'm just loving these transfers. I'm, I'm learning so much. Look at that, beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. So that is the top of the bench. Um, I could put some stuff on the um, on the sides here, um, which I might do. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But so as far as I'm concerned, I think this looks pretty good. Um, I don't want to overdo it. I really like the way this looks, though. It's called uh, polycrylic. Uh, it is a clear um, sealer that you put on top. It's made by Minwax. Um, I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully, I don't spill it. Crystal clear top coat. Water-based. And that's what I will put on here 
to seal my chalk paint. I'll put it over the whole bench to seal the chalk paint and seal the um, the transfers. Um, but when I was saying you get what you pay for, I will show you the difference between these iron orchid transfers and these other transfers. You see these? You see, you see how shiny these are? And that's the way they go on your on your piece. Shiny like that. Which I I hate. I hate it. I mean, these are beautiful, but they've got that terrible gloss shine. Now, if you look at these transfers. They are matte. Now, that's the underside, and I'm showing it to you this way so you could see exactly what I'm saying. They have a matte finish to them. There's not all that glossy shine. So when they go on your piece, they look like they're hand-painted on there. They don't have all of that, that shine. I have to put this back on here. So... Um, that's what I mean when I say you get what you pay for. You can go cheaper and get something like the other ones, or you can spend a little more money and get a quality transfer. So, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm going to grab my, um, my polycrylic sealer here. And I'm just going to get... One of my brushes. Uh, I'm trying to find one that is not going to leave all kinds of. Here, we'll use this one. That won't you leave all kinds of um, brush strokes. This is a nice one. I just got it. Uh, Artify. All right, so you always want to make sure that you stir your your sealer uh, with a paint stick before you apply it because it settles and you don't get the full effect, you know. So that's what I'm doing over here to the side is I'm stirring it, cleaning off my stir stick, and now I'm going to apply this. And this will protect your, your transfers and your paint job. I'm not going to paint the rest of it yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to put anything else on the sides of it yet. But I wanted to at least get the top um, done so you guys can know how, how to actually do this. And maybe you'll you'll want to give it a try because I'm telling you, you can take a a tired old thrift store, find a dresser or a piece of furniture, and you can absolutely transform it into something totally amazing with um with these transfers. And even you know, just painting it. You know, a coat of paint does wonders, changing out hardware. Um, so, there it is, everybody. Um, what a beautiful piece now. I mean, you could set this in your kitchen or in your bedroom and put a little, little vase of flowers on it and some little tchotchkes, whatever. I mean, look at that. How pretty did that come out? Oh my gosh, I just love it. Uh, if I do anything else to it, I will definitely show you. But for right now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button for me. And leave me some comments. Share the video. And subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to my channel. I would love to have you. All right, guys, that'll do it for this upcycle craft video. 
Take care and I'll see you soon. All right, now that I have my um, sealing coat, my sealer coat, I should say, on here, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distress it just a little bit to give it that vintage look. Uh, and I'm gonna do that with some sandpaper. And then I am going to add like an antiquing uh, wax to it so that it looks older and vintage, which is, of course, what we like in this community is old, crusty, dusty, and vintage. <laughs> so let me grab a piece of sandpaper. I am going to use some 80 grit, but you could definitely use something like 220 um, I just use the 80 because it's very um, gritty <laughs> and it doesn't take as long to distress and you just have to use a light hand with it. So I'm going to start like around here and I'm just trying to bring back some of the, um, the wood underneath. Um, And then I'm going to start over here on the edge very lightly. Just to bring, like I said, some of that worn look. Now, the reason I don't put the antiquing wax on until after I put on the top coat, the protective coat, is because it gives the, the item a sheen. And it makes it easier to wipe off your excess um, antiquing wax uh, when it already has uh, a protective coat on it. See how I'm just kind of um, getting a little bit of color from the wood underneath to come back and peek through. Just in a few spots. Like here we got it. Let's see. Let's try up here. And you definitely want to go with the green of the wood. You don't want to go across the grain. Just doing little areas. Take a little bit of time to get back you know, through the chapter to the um to the wood. Now we're going to turn it. Whoops. 
Dang it, I forgot to put my second coat along here. I got to make sure I do that. <laughs> Sometimes you miss, you miss stuff. Just going to go along the edge here. And of course, we'll go along here as well. guys so this is ready to have some age put on it with some antiquing wax and um this is what i got i think i got this on amazon it's a dark paste wax and what you do is you could either rub it on with a paper towel or a soft cloth or a brush however you want to do it so what I do is I do a section, you know, a little area at a time, and then wipe it back. So let me show you. I'm going to take this wax brush that I have. And I'm just going to dip this in here, and it's going to go on pretty dark. So let me get my, um, my rag ready here so I can start to wipe it back. So you could see how it stays darker in the areas that you sanded, which is pretty cool. I really, uh, that's what I really like. I like that, that it stays in those areas in like a different shade. Pretty cool. All right, let me, let's do some more here. So this spreads really nice on here now because it's got the um it's got the top coat on here. So then once I um once I antique this piece, I will put another um top coat on it just to seal everything in. Um so the whole bench will get a top coat, uh you know, a, a clear top coat which I will show you what I, well, I did show you the uh, Minwax uh, water-based polycrylic. That's what I, uh, I like to use. Looks pretty good, huh, guys? I'm loving it. All right. So basically, that's pretty much it, everyone. You'll put your, paint the whole bench with the polycrylic. Um, after you put your um, transfers on, you'll paint the whole thing with the polycrylic. Then you'll go, uh, you'll distress it. Or you could distress it first, then apply your, your uh, sealer coat on. Then you'll come back with your antiquing wax all over the whole piece and wipe it back. And then... Seal it again with your uh, 
polycrylic uh, sealer. And then your piece is finished. Uh, I think this came out really, really beautiful.